Hey everybody, and welcome to my first of two videos on the Miranda Sensor X. This is a camera I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've had this for about a year, and I, I just haven't had film out of it long enough to actually do a video with it. This is an interchangeable lens SLR camera, and what that means is that the front lens here can be taken off and a different one can be put on. And single lens means it has one lens that the light comes through and goes to your eye and then to your film when you take the picture. This has a very interesting metering system. It is a partial frame averaging meter. We'll talk a little bit about how that works and why. It is such an incredible innovation that Miranda had and it's too bad that it is not something that has survived. Through, through the decades, because this camera has an amazing meter. The shutter speeds are bulb, and then one second to one one thousandth of a second. It has 92% viewfinder magnification with an eyepiece, and we'll talk about some nifty things with this camera later. And uh, that also changes depending on which viewfinder you have installed on your camera. It has, with all viewfinders, 100% frame coverage, so what you th see through your eyepiece will be what is on the film exactly. The exception to that might be with the magnifying eyepieces. I don't have one of those, so I can't say for certain if that is the case. It, the focusing screen is a non-interchangeable microprism ring with Fresnel field. It is e extremely, extremely easy to focus this camera accurately. And it has a flash sink somewhere around here. There's a port, oh, on the side right here, at 1 60th of a second. The Miranda Sensor X was in the line of the professional grade Miranda cameras. So this camera was designed for an advanced or professional user. It was a direct competitor with a Nikon F, Topcon D, and uh, at that time, the uh, Pentax Spotmatics F, ES, and uh, Spotmatic 2. This is a very advanced and well thought out system camera, and it is, it is indicative of, in many ways of the amount of innovation that can be had when you don't need to have a camera with specialized electronics to keep up because this is a, basically an all-mechanical camera, and it is, it is quite frankly one of the best cameras I've ever used. All but one model of Miranda had interchangeable viewfinder prisms, and we'll take a look at that and what that means for this camera. And one thing that sets this camera apart from the Nikon F and makes it better than the Nikon F when swapping out prisms. The Sensor X was produced by the Miranda Camera Company. It was made from 1966 until 1972. It was made in Tokyo until about 1970, and then somewhere else in Japan outside of Tokyo from 1970 until the run ended. This was preceded by the Miranda Automex. One of the major differences on the Automex was that the light meter was where this design element is, and it was not a through-the-lens camera. This was concurrent with the Sensomat GT FV FVTF Sensor X EE and various LabOREC models. The LabOREC were the laboratory specific cameras. And this was followed by the Sensor X 2. So if you've got your Sensor X, let's take a look at the different buttons and things on the top of the camera. And we'll go through all of the interface elements. Even though they're not on the top, here are the camera strap lugs. We'll start with those, and this is what you attach your camera strap to. Here we have the on-off switch, and one of the flaws with the Sensor X is that the on-off window can get very dirty. So, if the switch is in this setting, where, this, where the switch is aligned with this back corner of the camera here, it is off. If the switch is aligned with the PC port, it is on, and it says on or off in that window there. We next have the flash type selection dial, which is this dial right here, and you rotate it from X to FP, and you can see as well that the on-off 
rotates into a different position depending on what type of flash you're using as a, as a reminder to know what type of flash you have selected. Here is the film rewind knob and film rewind lever that simply flips out of it. This is your removable pentaprism. This is the frame count window and it has a slight magnifying glass in there to make the numbers a little bit larger than they actually are, which is a pretty neat uh, element, I think. Here, that little orange indicator, that is your cocked indicator. When it's orange, your shutter is ready to fire. When it's white, your shutter has been fired. And it also doubles as your shutter speed indicator, which is logical. I don't know why everyone didn't do that. Here's your film advance lever. And this is what you use to advance the film to the next frame and rearm the shutter. This is your shutter speed selection dial. You simply rotate it to select your shutter speed. It also doubles as your film speed selection dial. So ASA and ISO are the same thing. To select your film speed, you simply lift it and rotate it and it will move in the opposite direction as your rotation and it's incredibly easy to select exactly the film speed that you want. Here is the front of the camera and if you've seen my videos before and if you've used other cameras you will note that we didn't have a shutter release button when we talked about the top of the camera and that's because it's right here on the front. This is the uh, self timer dial. And it is activated by pushing the shutter release, not a separate button. This is the lens mount and it's a dual lens mount. It's a, a four claw bayonet. Most of the other camera makes are a three claw. The four claw means that you have to rotate the lens a shorter distance to get it to lock into place but it also has an M44 ring. It's not an M42 ring. It's an M44 ring in the center of it so that you can use the old Miranda M44 lenses as well as the claw mount lenses. The M44 ring is also used for the, for the, uh, for the bellows extension as well as the lens reverse and macro tubes because it's easier to get them to lock into place and swap out the tubes if you don't have to fiddle with things. And there's also no reason to have it line up a certain way when you're not going to have an aperture linkage. You can see on the mirror there, there is a whole bunch of cross marked sections, short, sort of shaped like an arch. And that's your light metering area. So every place that doesn't have that marking is not part of the light metering area. There we go. This orange indicator is the lens mounting indicator. So there's an orange line here and an orange dot on your lens. And those just line up for it to mount. And we'll see how to do that in the second video. This is the macro bellows mounting indicator. That's the only thing it's for. This is your aperture linkage and there is an aperture scale underneath that tells you what aperture your arm is set to. This is your maximum speed input dial. And what you do is you rotate the dial and there's a window on top of it where you can see the number and you just have to set this dial, the number in the window, to match the maximum aperture of your lens. So this is an f1.8 lens. Right there, you can see it's an f1.8 lens. And that means that this window has to be set at f1.8. If it's at 1.4 or 2.8 or another setting, then your light meter reading will be off and all of your images will be improperly exposed. On the side of the camera right here, we have the flash PC port. We also have the lens, the film back lock and film back release. This is a bit fiddly to open up the film back. So you've got to push down on this lock and lift up on that lever. And then to close it, you have to hold it in place and push the lever back into place. On the back of the camera, we have the film back itself. We have the battery chamber right here. 
we have the prism release button here, the serial number, and the serial number is a good way to tell about how old your camera is with these, and then the um, camera maker name right there. To remove the prism, you just slide this off to the side and push the prism backwards. There we have the prism. This is what the prism area looks like without the prism on it. You can see the focusing screen and the light meter needle over here on the side. To put the prism back on, you simply line it up, slide it forward, wait till it clicks, and now you're good to go. The camera bottom doesn't have too much on it. Here we have the film rewind button and the tripod bushing. Inside the camera, this is the film cassette chamber. And this is where you would put your film to load it before you use it. These four silver lines are the film guide rails, and these outer ones keep the film from moving up and down as it travels so that it just travels smoothly through the camera. These inner ones sandwich the film between these and the pressure plate, which we'll see in a second, to keep the film flat on plane. This is the shutter opening with the cloth shutter curtain. Remember not to touch the shutter curtain there. This is the film tension sprocket. This prevents the film from rolling backwards into the cassette or bowing and coming off of its flat on plane uh, position and helps to make sure that your images are properly focused. Here is the film take up spool and when you take a picture with this camera after you activate the shutter the film take up spool advances, pulls the film through, and re resets the shutter and cocks it for the next exposure. Here's the film back, and it's pretty spartan, has only what it needs, the film pressure plate right here, and a couple of nubs that help keep the film cassette in place while it's in use. Some notes on this camera. You can see that this one says 1.8 right here, and then it goes to 1.4 and 2.8. Early cameras had, the early Sensor X's had a maximum aperture here of 1.9 instead of 1.8. So if yours says 1.9, it's one of the oldest Sensor X's. And they also only went up to 16. And what that, what that meant specifically is that on the earliest Sensor X's, there was no 1.4, 1.9 instead of 1.8. And then on this aperture scale right here, instead of being 1.4, it only went down to 1.9, and then instead of going up to 22, it only went up to 16. In terms of 35 millimeter film, 16 is really your smallest usable aperture before you get extreme uh, loss of sharpness due to diffraction, and 1.9 is still a pretty fast aperture. Back in those days it was pretty close to blazing. The later models of this expand expanded the aperture range from 1.4 to 22. Miranda did have a few firsts in their innovations as a company, but mostly what they did was focusing on, on refining, and they did so with great ability, other makers' innovations. The first Sensor X's, the ones with the f1.9 maximum aperture, had a 5.4 degree, a 12% a of the image frame spot meter with no corresponding markings on the focusing screen. Later models had the partial frame averaging meter that this one has. So they found that the partial frame averaging meter was better than the spot meter and returned better images. And we'll talk a little bit about why that is in the second video. And they were right. Uh, so they did away with the spot meter. With original bodies, lenses that don't open widely, for instance, the 135 f3.5, um, the aperture linkage arm can still go all the way to f1.4. So if you use those, you will need to make sure that you are not setting the aperture linkage arm past the lens's maximum aperture, because if you do that, it will underexpose images. So that's, that's a shortcoming of some of the Sensor X bodies. The Sensor X and the Miranda Soligor lenses in general were well regarded in test reports for having very even center to corner evenness. And what that means is that with many lenses, especially some of the other brands, the center is extremely, extremely sharp, very sharp. But by the time you get to the edges, the image has lost a lot of sharpness. 
Miranda had lenses that were sharp the entire field over. And I, this lens on this camera right now is one of the sharpest lenses I have ever used. It is as sharp, very nearly, if not as sharp, as my 31 millimeter FA Limited or 77 millimeter FA Limited. This is a fantastic lens. Miranda's have a reputation, however, for breaking, and I, I've read over and over again, and no one that I know of, as of this recording, is still repairing them. So be gentle with your Miranda. I, I will say I don't think that the reputation for breaking is as accurate as it would seem. I have more confidence in my Miranda than in the silk cords of the Minolta SRT linkage system. I think these are actually more durable than they have a reputation for being. One other thing, don't mount lenses on the green line because if you mount lenses using the green line on the front of the lens mount instead of the orange line, lots and lots of things in your camera and lenses will break. The Sensor X is a wonderful camera. The Sensor X captivated me long before I found one. The emblem on the front simultaneously channels mid-century modern design aesthetic and my grandparents' garage door. So on looks alone, what's not to love? A year or so ago, I picked up my Sensor X for five bucks at an estate sale. The battery chamber was fused to the body thanks to a leaked battery and the lens was grimy and neglected. I knew, buying the Sensor X, that Miranda lenses have a mixed to poor reputation and the bodies were known for breaking easily. All of this I knew from reading about the Sensor X's on the internet. All of that, it turns out, was nothing more than internet truth. Truth based upon one person's opinion that repeats through copied and pasted posts spreading misinformation like wildfire in drought-stricken prairies. The Sensor X is a wonderful camera. The 51.8 with the 56mm filter thread is, bar none, the best 1.8 50mm lens I've ever used. The 50mm 1.8 with the 52mm thread ring was another story. The two 50mm 1.4 lenses I've used are second only to my Pentax SMC 50mm 1.4 and came out a much later lens. In fact, one of the 50mm 1.4 Mirandas I have has fungus like a mushroom farm in it. These photos you're looking at right now, they came from that lens. Want to know how the 1.4 stacks up to other makers 1.4s? It's as good or better than my Takamar 1.4. It's better than my Canon FD 1.4. It makes my Nikon Nikkor 1.4 look like a Holga lens. Everything you have ever heard about Miranda warrants exploration with your own experience because a significant amount of the opinion I found on the internet about these cameras was factually incorrect and exhibited a lack of experience from the sources who claimed to know the details. Question internet truth. Question internet authority. Test internet facts for yourself. A couple months back, I was taking photos with a loner DSLR and a retired professional photographer stopped to chat. Miranda somehow came up. He too loved the Miranda Sensor X he had once owned and agreed that the 51.8 on it was the best 51.8 he had ever used. He made an interesting offhand comment about Nikon being responsible for Miranda's final demise. I never could verify that, and the conversation moved on before I could press him on what he had said. It doesn't surprise me though that other makers could have been threatened by Miranda. I mean, the Sensor X was competition specifically for the Nikon F. The main difference between the F and the Sensor X is that the Sensor X has a better meter, smaller body, better interface, quieter shutter, and lots of other advantages over the F. If you take the prism off the Sensor X, you can use it as a waist level finder 
If you do that with the F, there's no guarantee that the focusing screen will stay in place, and you shouldn't really use the F without a prism as a waist-level camera. That, for macro photography, or low-to-the-ground low photography, is a huge difference. So, given the choice, I would pick a Sensor X over an F anytime. So, would this be a great camera to learn photography with? Absolutely. Would it be good to use as a seasoned and experienced photographer? Absolutely. Are the internet detractors misinformed? Absolutely. Having used this camera for more than a year now, I cannot understand how someone who has used one of these cameras would be a SensorX detractor. If your curiosity about this camera brought you to this video, if you wanted to check to see if every voice on the internet is uniform in its disapproval for Miranda, or if you wanted simply to find out a bit more about it, let me say it again. The Sensor X is a wonderful camera. Let's talk about some things not to do with your camera. Do not touch the shutter because it's a really good way to brick your camera. And if you can't get it replaced, then you've ruined an otherwise perfectly good camera. Don't touch the mirror inside of the housing because it is a surface coated silver mirror and the oils from your fingers will tarnish it. Don't leave your camera and lenses in your car because the heat will cause oils to get into places where they shouldn't and when they get thin from the heat and then when they get cool and get thicker again, things will not work as they should. Likewise, in the cold, the cold can cause the oils to break down and become gummy and then things won't work as they should. Don't store your camera gear in a plastic bag or box. Moisture will get into there and you will get fungus and it will be very damaging to your equipment. Don't let your camera get wet. It's an old camera and it's not weather sealed and it has some electronics which could be shorted out by water. Just remember that your camera is a precision tool and should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. So that's the first of these two videos on the Sensor X. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm going in the right direction and producing content which is useful to you. If you have questions or comments, please share those below. If you're an amateur photographer and have photos you've taken with a Sensor X and would like to share those in the comments, by all means, please put a link to your, to your web album. If you have suggestions or thoughts for future videos, I'm more than happy to make those if I have the knowledge and equipment. One last thing, thank you guys for watching and take great photos. It was concurrent with the Miranda Sensomat GTFV FVTF Sensor X EE and various Laborac uh, Laborac Laborac the, the laboratory specific models as well. Cheever. Shh.